close your eyes and watch your breath. Notice where you feel the breath when it comes in, where you feel it when it goes out. Try to stay right at that spot in the body. And stay right there even in between the breaths. Don't let the mind go wandering off. If thoughts go wandering out, you don't have to follow them. You can come right back to the breath. You don't have to straighten them out before you're done with them. Just leave them unfinished. Remember, you've got unfinished business right here, which is developing your mindfulness, developing your alertness. So you really have to be ardent about it. Because this work is important. Mindfulness is what keeps something in mind. You're keeping the breath in mind right now. And as for alertness, that is what watches and sees what's actually going on, what you're doing, what the results of what you're doing are. And these are two qualities you need in all your activities in life. So you can think of the meditation as a form of exercise. You've got to go down to the gym to get strong so that you can use your strength around the house or in your work or whatever. And the same way you exercise your mindfulness and alertness so you can use them throughout the day. And then there's that third quality the Buddha talks about, is being ardent about, is really taking this seriously and doing your best. Because you realize that training the mind is really important. This is where everything ha comes from. Your happiness comes from your own mind. Your sadness comes from your own mind. We tend to think about things outside as the cause for this. But actually it's the expectations that the mind sets up about the world. And either those expectations are fulfilled and exceeded or else they're not fulfilled. And so you've got to train your mind to figure out okay, what expectations are realistic, which ones really do lead to happiness. Because sometimes you set your hopes on things and you actually attain things, but they're bad for you. So you've got to be mindful and alert about this. Okay, These aspirations you have, where do they really lead you? Are they really worth following through with? What kind of aspirations would be good to work with, important to develop? This is where the Buddha talks about the underlying quality that makes us ardent in the practice, and that's heedfulness, realizing that there are dangers in life, and there are dangers not only outside, but even more importantly, there are dangers inside the mind, all your greed, aversion, and delusion, particularly the delusion that gets in the way. And so you've got to work on these things. You've got to develop the qualities that can see through your delusion. The problem with delusion, of course, is that it's hard to know when you're deluded. But the Buddha says you can begin to notice that the mind has its forms of what he calls intoxication. We're intoxicated with our youth. When we're young, we think, okay, we're strong, we can do anything we want, there are no consequences down the line. Or being, we can be intoxicated with our health. So I'm healthy and strong right now, and this is going to just keep on going. I don't see any disease coming up in my body, so it must be okay. Or we're intoxicated simply in the fact that we're alive. We don't think we're going to die anytime soon. And so we forget about aging, illness, and death. And when these things come, then you begin to realize that you were heedless when you were young and you wasted your time. And you can't get your youth back at that point. So what you've got to learn how to do is be heedful while you've got the chance to use whatever strength, whatever health, whatever life you've got. And this is what the Buddha said. This is the source of all of our skillfulness. He didn't say that we're naturally good or naturally bad, simply that we can do both good and bad, and it makes a difference. This is an important difference, because otherwise either you're going to suffer or you're going to find true happiness. Which is, which do you want? Well, you want to have happiness. This is what you tell yourself. And yet you go ahead and do things, all, all kinds of things that are against that. This is why you've got to work through these forms of intoxication. This is one of the reasons why the, the precept there, the fifth precept we chanted just now, is against taking intoxicants. You might say with the other precepts, other people are being harmed, but when you take an intoxicant, it's just your own business, nobody else is being harmed. But that's not the case. You're crippling your mind, and you're adding more intoxication on the intoxication that's already there. That makes you more heedless, and again, that means you're going to do less to develop skillful qualities of the mind. And when that happens, everybody suffers. You suffer and the people around you suffer. So you want to be heedful about the fact that your mind needs to be trained and you've got only a little time right now. You can't get carried away with the fact that you're young and strong, healthy. And there's just still alive, and it doesn't, death doesn't seem any time near. Death doesn't come with any advance notices. Aging, you can think that people would, would know. When they, when they turn 60, they're going to get old, but it just kind of creeps up on you. You think it's the same old body you had before, but it does things it, without, your, without your permission, without notifying you ahead of time. So you've got to work on the, training the mind while you've got the chance. Because that's the most important thing in life. So be ardent about this practice, being more mindful, being more alert, really paying attention to the fact that your mind is the biggest problem in life, but also when it's that problem is solved, you've solved all the other problems.
So try to keep these points in mind and be heedful of your actions, be heedful of your state of mind, because that makes all the difference.